If your ankles ever looked like this and you've had an ankle sprain, have you ever wondered if it's a bad idea to sit and just hang back and put your foot up on the coffee table while you watch TV? What can you be doing to get back on the field faster or back in the sports faster? I'm going to tell you that you can dramatically cut down your ankle injury time by following these home treatment steps that I'm about to give you. So here's what an ankle sprain is. 90% of ankle sprains are called an inversion ankle sprain. That's when your foot buckles in and the ligaments on the outside of your ankle can either become stretched or torn. So you have three ligaments here that can become damaged, but this one called the anterior talofibular is the most likely injured. And you're going to have pain right on the outside of your foot, right in this area. It's mostly in the front and bottom of the bone in the soft tissue. If it's the bone itself, on either side, you may be looking at more of an ankle fracture. And the other 10% of ankle injuries are when the foot turns out with your ankle 90 degrees. This, as you can see, tilts the foot slightly out of the ankle cavity joint here. So this, this is called the high ankle sprain and is causing pain more up in this region, especially in the center right here, whereas a common ankle sprain would be down in this area. So three stages, stretched ligaments, partial tears, and complete ruptures. A stretch, you're not going to have a ton of bruising. It may be a little bit sore. You can still bear weight on it, but it's going to feel a little bit unstable, and you, you may limp when you walk. I'm going to teach you how to take it down from a couple weeks to three to five days or so. First thing you want to do within half an hour and specifically within the first two to three days, continue doing this, icing and compression. The biggest misconception is this is just to control pain. It is not. This is to increase healing time. It will dramatically increase healing time, and this is the most important thing you can do. Take ice and put it on the affected area for 15 to 20 minutes while you watch TV, and you can do this over top a compressive wrap. What icing does is it constricts your blood vessels, prevents the swelling, and prevents cells that come to degrade and break apart the tissue from coming in there. And what happens is, the less these cells are in here, the shorter your swelling and inflammatory stages, and the faster other cells can come in and start rebuilding the tissues. Compression does the same thing. If there's less fluid leaking in the area, less of these cells can get in there in the first day or two, and you can get rid of this inflammatory cycle. So ice two to three times a day, 15, 20 minutes each time for the first two to three days, and the earlier the better. And take an elastic bandage and wrap it from the middle of the foot and wrap back around. Don't make it so tight where your toes get numb, but a little bit of compression is good. And elevating is great as well. So do those things. Next thing you can do is some anti-inflammatory pills. Per your doctor's recommendations, make sure you don't get uh, heartburn or anything like that as a result. But taking these things also in the first few days or week decreases those inflammatory cells from coming in there and preventing the healing from taking place. You want to wear some sturdier shoes, a compression wrap. This is within the right after the first week once you're starting to walk again so you don't put any strain on it and injure it any further. And... I know it's difficult, and almost nobody does this, but elevation also helps. If you're kicking back on the couch anyway watching TV, toss it up there. This, combined with the compression, prevents the bad cells from getting in there in the first day or two. You can also use topical anti-inflammatories, but again, this is more your doctor's recommendations, depending on how you handle it. And rest. I'm not saying you can't do anything with your feet, but maybe consider swimming, biking, rather than you know training for your marathon. It'll keep your cardio up and prevent the ankle from getting worse. A partial tear. There's no way to really tell this except really with the healing time and maybe an in-depth uh, examination by a doctor that knows what they're doing. But usually the more swelling you have, the, the more time you're going to be out of it and the more damaged the ligaments are. So same stuff as before, control the inflammation with ice and compression and anti-inflammatories and supports and elevate. But long term, if it's still not getting better after a couple months and your ankle feels unstable, 
then go get some physical therapy. You'll see your doctor. Maybe there may be some other stuff wrong. And I'm going to get into specific details about that in a second. The complete tear. This is sometimes even worse than a small broken ankle because this can keep you up for months and it can separate your ankle leading to long-term damage. When you have something like this or really purple like this, you want to go see your doctor because what could happen is when you go for MRI, your ankle ligaments are going to be ruptured and you could have cartilage damage. As you can see right here in the ankle joints on top of your talus, a large divot of the cartilage is missing and the bone underneath it. If you don't correct this, it could lead to ankle arthritis within 5, 10 years or sooner. Another thing here, if you look at the right versus the left ankle, right here, it's a very small joint space, but right here, the joint space is opened up, right here. So the ligament that normally holds these two bones together is ruptured. So as you can see, the lateral clear space has increased. So doctors look at inside right here, this space, this space, and this space. If any of them are off, this is going to dramatically lead to increased arthritis. So you definitely want to get checked out, or by the time you're 30, 40, you could be having ankle arthritis. And you could have came in the first place and got it taken care of. And sometimes in these situations, you may have a small fracture. And like I said, sometimes a small fracture is not as bad as a complete uh, ligamentous rupture, but you can also have a severe deformity like this. So these are the reasons you want to see your podiatrist or go to the emergency room. The only way to know for sure is to get an x-ray. Do not try any of this at home alone without supervision. This is presented by Michigan Foot Doctors. If you think our information helped you, give us a thumbs up and come visit the site for even more.